it's Scott. Welcome to today's session in the Games and Libraries course. Now, yesterday I talked about analog games. Today I'm going to talk about digital games. Now, digital games are probably what you thought of when you heard a class was going to be taught on gaming and libraries because we tend to have this connection for some reason to gaming with video games or digital games. But, you know, gaming is a huge variety of games. It's not just electronic gaming. But I'll go through the different categories of digital games. And again, if you've been into digital gaming, you'll probably not learn anything from this session. But if you're new, that's really the goal is to help level the playing field so that everyone has the base knowledge of these different types of activities. Activities. Now, the first type of digital game I'll talk about are computer games. Computer games have been around for quite some time, and in fact, public libraries, when they first introduced computers back in the 70s, had computer games. It's a way that libraries have been supporting gaming. Uh, computer games, one challenge with uh, games that you buy off of the shelf and install on computer is many times you can run into issues with firewalls and installation problems. It can actually be pretty challenging sometimes to get games and install them. Um, another type of computer games are web-based games. Now these are games where people can go on to the internet and they run an, if, in a web browser. And these types of games actually are much easier for libraries to deal with. And actually this type of gaming has been in, also in libraries quite a bit because as people are allowed to use the computer for other things, email or Facebook or whatever, they're allowed to use the computer for gaming as well. So seeing people play a web-based game is a pretty common thing in a lot of libraries today. Many computer games are single-player affairs and because of that I find that they don't tend to match up particularly well to the kind of interactive social experiences that many libraries are trying to provide with in-house gaming. So you may want to consider computer games as something to circulate, but as far as an in-house game activity, unless it's for an educational purpose in a school library, computer-based standalone single-player games may not be the best investment of your gaming dollar. Web-based games, on the other hand, are much easier. You can help point people to ones that are easy to play, that are safe. Um, those can be a reasonable way for people to explore gaming on their own. It doesn't cost the library anything. Now, another popular type of games are console games. Console games are things like the Xbox. This is the controller for the Xbox, or the PlayStation, or the Nintendo Wii. And all of these are consoles, they're boxes that you buy, and then you buy the game separately. Now, unlike all of the games we talked about last time, when you get into console games, you have to spend two things. You have to buy the platform and you have to buy the game. So it takes a pretty hefty investment before you actually start getting uh, your gaming content. A lot of console games can be controlled by different types of controllers. So if you want to play Dance Dance Revolution, for example, the same PlayStation that would be using this controller can use a large dance pad, which only has four big buttons. And the big buttons are just kind of emulating moving up and down on this controller. But rather than pushing them with your finger, you're stepping on them with your foot. And you're doing it at a time when the arrow hits the top of the screen. Guitar Hero is very similar. With Guitar Hero, you're pushing the buttons on a plastic guitar rather than pushing the buttons on your controller. So it's just another way to control the game, but you're doing it with a different shaped controller. And that's what these rhythm games are really all about. Now the Wii, the big thing about the Wii is that it uses this small controller which detects motion. Well actually what's going on is it's got an accelerometer in there which detects the speed at which you're moving it and the angle. The accelerometer is off center. Actually it's not in the middle so they can detect if you're rotating it. And then it has a little infrared camera here and what it's doing is the Wii has this little sensor bar that you have to get with it. And the sensor bar has a couple lights and the little infrared camera is just detecting the lights. Because of that you can actually play the Wii with two candle lights and having this detect the candle lights, although not very good. Just a note on console controllers, in general it is better to get controllers with cables rather than wireless controllers. For example, for the Xbox you can get Xbox controllers that are wireless or if it's a little less money to get ones with cables. The advantage of the cabled controllers is they are less easy for someone to stick in their pocket and walk away with. This little Wiimote is wireless. They don't have these with cables. Uh, this is a wrist strap and the reason why this is a dangerous thing is that this thing costs about $40 and is universally compatible with anyone's Wii. It's not locked down to a Wii. I so wish that Nintendo or someone would release some sort of a security locking sleeve that would actually give you a lanyard connecting this down to the ground so that these don't walk away as easily. But that's one of the challenges we have. So if you're choosing between a wired or wireless controller, I suggest getting wired controllers just because it makes it easier to tie them down.
The third type of digital game platform we're going to talk about are handheld platforms. So this is the Nintendo DS. It is a very popular handheld platform, the most popular handheld platform. There is a Sony PlayStation Portable, but the DS is by far much more popular. The DS has a little Wi-Fi connector in there so it can connect to other DSs. It's called DS for double screen. There's a top and a bottom screen, and the bottom screen is touch sensitive, and so it comes with a little stylus that you can use to play games. Um, it's also got the standard game controller type things as well as buttons on the top. Now, there's three of these you can get. The original DS, the DS Lite, which is what this is, and the new DSi. I suggest to libraries your best dollar value is on the DS Lite. The original DS, while you can find them for not much money, the problem is the screens are quite dim and it can be frustrating to use them in any sort of a bright environment. The DS Lite improved that, made the screen much brighter, and this has been out for a while. Now people are starting to sell these to the used game places in order to get the new DSi. The DSi has little cameras in the front and on the top, um, but their game's not using those things. It's, I would predict that the DSi, the cameras, are just going to be a gizmo that aren't heavily used. So if you're looking to get DSs, I suggest the DS Lite. Now, across all of these platforms, you've got certain types of games that tend to be popular. There's lots of types of games out there. I'm only going to focus on the more popular ones. Uh, one of the more popular types of games are, as I said earlier, the rhythm games. And these are games that have become very popular in library settings. Things like Dance Dance Revolution, Guitar Hero, and Rock Band, where it's basically Simon Says. You know, computer says press red now, and you press red, and that's how the game works. But it's doing it to music, and so that music um, is what's driving people. It gives it a party atmosphere. Another popular type of game are racing games. In racing games, you are driving a car, you're trying to beat other people. And so, for example, for the Wii, Mario Kart is a very popular racing game, and you hold the controller like this and you steer it. It even comes with a little plastic wheel that you can put around it, but still, you're just steering the controller around. But there are also racing games for all these other platforms as well. Sports games are another popular title, and so Madden Football, for example, is very popular. And a word I'll say about Madden Football and older games in general. As I go through the class, you'll understand that it's not so much about the specific game you're using, but rather the gaming experience you're providing. Because in Madden Football and other sports games that have years, like Madden Football 2010, they change out the roster of who's in the game to map reality. Because of that, older versions of the game become cheap very quickly. Madden 2008 will cost you hardly anything in a used game store, but the gameplay is almost identical to Madden 2010. The only difference is which roster of players are there. So if you're looking to add a sports game to your collection for use in a gaming program, take a look at the ones that are one or two years old. You'll find you'll save a lot of money, but provide almost the same gaming experience. Another popular type of game are FPSs, or first-person shooters. Halo is the most common example of this type of game that's popular with people. Uh, these also games also tend to be one of the more violent types of games because you're running around in the first-person mode shooting at people. They're also very popular games with teenage boys, so you've got to try and balance that violence issue and, and what you're going to allow in your library with what the interest in the game. Uh, one thing to look at is a game like America's Army. America's Army was put out by the Army, and it's got a mode in it that makes it a paint ball type simulation and so when you get shot you just sit down so you're not there's no blood there's no violence but still got all the first person shooter type elements if you're looking for that puzzle games are another very popular type of game so there's lots of web-based puzzle games but also all of these systems have puzzle games on them some puzzle games are more like party games which is another category party game is a game really focused on that social interaction between people and so they have you doing silly things the Wii has lots and lots of party games have you doing silly things in a group environment with each other there are civilization games where it's a single player experience usually where players are building up civilizations and there are real-time strategy games, and these games have people building up armies and civilizations, but then fighting each other. So those are designed as multiplayer experiences where each player is on their own screen. Another popular type of game are fighting games, and these games have two people or more people beating each other up. Now, Super Smash Bros. Brawl is a popular fighting game for the Wii that does not have the gory violence that a lot of other fighting games have. Uh, so it tends to be a pretty good selection if you want a fighting game experience in a library, but you don't want something that's so gory. It has things like Mario fighting Pokemon, so it's a very cartoony fighting game. So that's a good selection for a fighting game. Now there's many other types of games like simulation games and knowledge games and things like that. But what I've talked about here so far are some of the more commonly used game types in library settings. You'll want to look at your demographics and you'll want to look at what sort of interactions you're trying to bring about to help you select the games. But there'll be a lot more about that concept later on in the class. 
One other type of relatively inexpensive electronic game is a standalone game. And these come in two forms. One is a standalone game that has a screen where it is a, just a single game, maybe with different modes, that you can play. Now that's usually going to be a solo game experience. Um, sometimes there are different modes. If you remember the old Merlin, for example, it had a lot of puzzle modes, but there's football and a number of standalone games. But there are also standalone games that hook into a television. They're very easy to hook up. They'll come with just a, a, a typical red, white, and yellow plug, and you hook into a TV. And those you want to look, some are single game experiences, some are multiplayer game experiences. But those will be relatively inexpensive. They're usually $30 to $40, and they'll give you a game to have in a library game setting without having to buy a platform and a controller. So you might find something like, you know, Miss Pac-Man that's going to be where all the smarts are in the joystick controller. So you can have a number of different game stations without having to buy a $300 console and providing access to some various types of games. You'll find these in toy stores and there's quite a few of them out there. So no matter what platform we're talking about, computer installed or computer web based, console, handheld, standalone, they all have these different types of games that I've described on them. And so once you figure out the type of game you want, you can then figure out, all right, well, what type of platform is best suited for providing access to this type of game? What might we be able to do for less money? What might we be able to find used? Because all of that's going to come into play as you're making your choices. To wrap up, I'll present some generalities about the differences between analog games and digital games. Digital games enforce the rules. You don't typically need someone explaining the rules as the game goes on. The game enforces it. Now, you may need to help coach someone how to interact with the game, but the game's going to enforce the rule set. With an analog game, it's just the components, and so it's up to the players or a moderator to enforce the rule set as the game goes on. Digital games tend to draw people over because they're noise, they're flashy, they're exciting. They tend to get people coming and staring at the blinking lights on the screen. But because of this, they also decrease the amount of interaction those people have with each other because they're staring at the screen. In a analog game where people are face to face with each other, there tends to be more social interaction because you don't have that distraction of the blinking lights and all that going on. So again, that's why I like to have a selection of these different types. One type to bring them in, one type to get them interacting with each other. I do find that when you have a digital game, let's say you have a dance, dance revolution going on where you have two people staring at the screen dancing on dance pads. These are little people dancing on the dance pads. Eee! And so what's going on when these people are dancing, behind them are a bunch of people watching. And the people that are watching, they sometimes interact with each other. So you have interaction going on because of the game, but not by the main people who are dancing on the pads because they're too busy dancing to be able to talk with each other. The other big difference between the two is the pace of the game. Most analog games are not in a lifetime setting. There are some, but most don't require you to respond in a certain amount of time, which is going to make some players be able to play those games who cannot play most of the video games, which do have some sort of a timing element. And again, some video games don't have a timing element, but most digital games have some sort of a time element going on as you're playing them, something you have to do in a certain amount of time. And that adds a level of challenge. That's why it gets some people engaged with the games. It keeps them going at this pace. And some people don't like that kind of game. And again, that's why a variety of game types is good. Now tomorrow I'm going to talk about hybrid games. And these are different types of games that don't really fall into either of these first two camps. It's, I think, some of the more interesting areas for exploration of where libraries can go with their gaming. And that's it for this session. If you want to talk about the concepts presented here, go to the website below and they'll give you a place where you can discuss this stuff. But until tomorrow, that's it for now. Bye-bye.